Hi guys, it's Clarice and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video today, we are going to be going through all the many products that I use on a regular basis. So if you've been wondering uh, what products I use and you've kind of missed the list in the description, I'm going to show you guys the visuals right here because I get questions from you all the time. And uh, so here we go. Excited to show you guys. So here's a bird's eye view of all the frequently used products in my videos. And uh, I'm going to walk you through them one by one. So let's get started. Uh, I think we'll start off with the bottles first and then we can head on into the other products. But um, right here we have the Winsor Newton Gold Ink. And this is something that I use as well, it's metallic, obviously, and uh, I use it in certain projects of mine that require gold tinges, uh, which is not very, very often in my videos, but I think I've used it about three or four times now. Uh, and then obviously in personal projects as well. So it's a great gold, especially if you're a calligrapher, it's a great ink. Um, so that's that. I'm going to put it aside. The next thing I have is my masking fluid uh, again it's Winsor and Newton I've used this in I think two videos so far but in a lot of other personal projects as well and it's an amazing feature especially when you when you want to do the uh, negative space aspect and want to get a perfect uh, shape around it the next thing I have are these Radiant Concentrated Watercolors by Dr. P.H. Martens. I um, just purchased four colors, four of my favorite colors that I figured would be a good enough uh, number or combination to kind of dabble with and just get accustomed to what these, um, uh, what these, I guess, colors can do. And I love them, uh, with the exception that after I purchased them, I kind of realized that um, any drawings or sorry, any paintings that you've created using them, you can't really expose them in sunlight. Uh, otherwise, they fade and affect the whole uh, piece of artwork. So that's kind of sad, but it's still amazing colors. I love how they transition on paper. They're super bright. I have put out a couple of videos um on this so you can definitely check those out to see what it looks like and it's just so satisfying to work with just to kind of see the color flow and the brightness so dr ph martin's radiant concentrated watercolor um this is the violet this is cherry red this is a lemon yellow and then we have the turquoise blue so I'm putting those aside and we are moving on to the next thing which is gouache now this is something I purchased uh, when I was in the States uh, I can't remember which art store I was in but they had uh, these guys Marie's I guess Marie's gouache color and it was cheap so I picked it up because I'd never really used gouache before and I figured this was a great way to kind of start and just dabble. Um, so I have not really ventured a whole bunch into the gouache area of like painting florals and stuff, but I do use the white quite a bit uh, and I have used it quite a bit in a lot of my videos for 2020. So this is the gouache guys. For those who are asking keep this back here uh, the next thing I want to show you is my palette so this is a palette that I purchased off Amazon and um, works great for any of those paintings that I have that cannot cannot be accommodated on my little shell palette um, so I use this one instead and uh, I also have my Daniel Smith colors in here. This was just the basic set that I purchased just to kind of try out Daniel Smith and see how, um, how I like them. And I really like them. Um, but yes, not to take away from the palette. Uh, this is the palette that I purchased. 
and it works quite well for large paintings that require quite a bit uh, of color in it uh, and yeah my next thing I'm going to show you is my regular colors that I use all the time creating for most of my videos um, yes you know what I mean uh, these are st. Petersburg white knights uh, they are in a 21 pan holder I have 24 of these so three of them are sitting outside because I miscalculated and bought the wrong size I guess holder for them so uh, st. Petersburg uh, white knights I love them they are my go-to uh, for those of you who've been watching quite a few of my videos, you probably have figured out that some of my color namings are off and the story behind that is that uh, this was my first real investment in watercolor when I started out back in 2014 and um, when I purchased them, I unwrapped these and started using them without really caring for the name and unfortunately now when people need to know what color I'm using, they don't even have like a follow-up name to it. So while some colors are very obvious, like the yellowish green is very obvious, um, others aren't. So sometimes my blues get mixed up and or the names that I call them get mixed up. Um, so for those of you who are super into the names, uh, my bad, but uh, yeah. I guess for me, my main point when I am um, doing a tutorial for you guys, I'm very much so of the mindset that you can use the colors that I'm using, but I would much prefer if you kind of dabbled in your own color scheme and kind of work through it. So that's my thinking, which is why I don't let it stop me from still carrying on with you guys. Uh, next thing I'm going to talk about is paper. Uh, this is the paper I use in pretty much all my videos with the exception of like I think a handful where I've used arches but uh, this is the Canson watercolor paper uh, I know some of you have asked oh well what kind of Canson watercolor paper is it a hundred percent cotton no guys it isn't it is the cold press very basic uh, microfiber I believe and uh, I use it because it's cheap and it is cheap on the pocket and it is it gives me the results that I want and I am also of the mindset that if you can achieve really great results with something uh, that is you know not the greatest to work with imagine what you can do with something that is a legit 100% cotton and will give you the amazing results so just my thought process and my opinion all right so the last thing left to do is my brushes so I'm gonna start off with the silver black velvet so these are the silver black velvet brushes I purchased them as a set they come in the number four number eight and number 12 and uh, they are great to use uh, they have a nice pointed tip and they hold a lot of water as well so these are I don't use the 12 too much because it's quite a large brush so unless I'm doing a painting that's massively huge uh, not or larger than the 9 by 12 I don't quite use it because my florals tend to get, get super huge if I use it so my 8 and the 4 are the most popular that I use in these putting those aside uh, my next favorite brushes are the mop brushes by da Vinci in the one and the four again the one is what I use most often it gives me amazing organic shapes for florals and sometimes leaves and uh, I love it I don't use the four very often because again it retains a lot of water more so than the uh, silver black velvet and uh, if the surface isn't large then it kind of is pointless to use it because it just makes leaves me with a larger whatever it is that I'm painting than necessary so I stick with the one the next 
is the Princeton Neptune in the 8. I heard lots of amazing things about Princeton and so I figured I wanted to try them out myself and they make a pretty neat brush and I like the number 8 so I kind of use it when I don't want something too rigid um, and the number 8 in the silver black velvet kind of doesn't quite have the same feel like the Princeton. So it gives me a nice variation. So eight is a popular size for me. My newest brush for 2020 is the Escada number two in, I guess, the Perla series. And I love it. It is amazing because it's smaller than the four. And so it gives me tinier detail. And the tip on this is super fine. So they make really good brushes. And I will definitely be getting more of these um, as we go along in 2021. And the brushes that I have here are just some fancier brushes or some special brushes, you can call them. This is the Filbert in the four. I believe uh, this is something that I had purchased when I had uh, gone to the art store and these were on clearance. And I'm glad I picked these up because these are amazing for loose florals. The Filbert number four, and this is the Q series, doesn't quite have a name. Uh, so I don't know, maybe Q is the name, I'm not sure. And uh, then these two are what I purchased when I was in the States and purchased the Marie Gouache. So I'm assuming this is a brand just in the States. Uh, this is the Angular Creative Mark brush in the half. And uh, this is just a regular round 10. Uh, and they're by best, I believe. So, yep, these are the brushes that I use. These are the products that I use. So I hope you guys found this informative. If you wish to purchase any of these, I do have links for all of these products in the description below. Um, they are links uh, mainly to Amazon Canada and Amazon USA. Um, and obviously there are affiliate links. Uh, you don't have to purchase them from there. Maybe you wanna just look at the product and copy the name and do a search for it yourself. This is entirely up to you guys. But, um, but yes, in a nutshell, these are all the products I use. So thank you for watching and feel free to let me know if you have any questions on any of anything that I have said and presented today. Thanks guys, bye.